Okay, so we've finally reached the United States. Let's start off with the Capitol building. The Capitol is the meeting place of the federal government of the United States. It is viewed as the seat of democracy in the country, the place where big political decisions are taken regarding the future of the nation. Its structure, art and symbols all reveal the importance of Freemasonry in shaping that government. For example, like the Sphinx in Egypt, it was constructed with regard to alignment with heavenly bodies, ley lines, occult numerology and spiritual energy. The United States Capitol at Washington, D.C. was the creation of a succession of architects who were almost all Freemasons. Originally designed by William Thornton, the work was completed by Brother Benjamin Latrobe, who also redesigned it after the War of 1812. The flanking wings and the Great Dome were added later by Brother Thomas Eustick Walter. It was George Washington himself who laid the cornerstone with full Masonic regalia and ritual. The cornerstone of the U.S. Capitol building was laid with Masonic honours on September 18, 1793, under the auspices of the Grand Lodge of Maryland. At the ceremony, President George Washington presided. Worshipful Brother Washington was assisted by Joseph Clark, Grand Master of Maryland, Elisha C. Dick, Master of Alexandria Lodge No. 22 of Virginia, and Valentine Reinsel, Master of Lodge No. 9 of Maryland. Not just the capital, but the geographical layout of the whole of Washington, D.C. was carefully designed and the capital itself is just one component. Take a look at this photo and notice its relation to the Washington Monument, one of the most famous obelisks in the world. Notice how similar this is to the Vatican's layout. This exact same layout can be found in Paris also and many other cities. Why this configuration? The key to this is perhaps the dome which dominates these buildings. In many ancient cultures the dome shape represented the female principle or the womb. When you have the male principle, which is the obelisk, connected to the female principle, it was believed by occultists that a third entity, a kind of spiritual energy, is produced. We've already seen that idea in the square and compass logo. In occultism, the idea is also quite prevalent that certain shapes and colours either create or diffuse energies. We're quite familiar with this concept today in the form of Feng Shui, which was a craze a while ago arranging your furniture in relation to what they do with energies to create balance. You can think of this kind of arrangement between the obelisk and the dome as a kind of feng shui designed to generate a spiritual power. At the top of the capital dome we find this statue who symbolically faces east towards the sunrise. This is the goddess of reason who the French enthroned at Notre Dame, or as we've come to know her since the beginning of this study, Asherah or Ashtoreth. She pops up absolutely everywhere. This particular idol was designed by a Freemason, Thomas Crawford, and is standing on top of a spherical shape which almost certainly represents the earth, around which is written in Latin, E Pluribus Unum. This means, out of many, one. Now remember, there's always a light side and dark side to every symbol, so the lighter good meaning for public consumption is calling for the unity of the American people, which was made up of immigrants. The dark hidden meaning is that the whole world will be united under the feet of this enigmatic goddess. The American form of Asherah is mostly known as Columbia. The DC in Washington DC actually stands for Washington District of Columbia, so effectively it's like saying that it's her district, her territory where she rules. Fans of the movie theatre will recognise her as the logo for Columbia Pictures. She is often thought of as the Spirit of America. Note how she holds an illuminating light in her right hand. And I never really noticed this, but it could also be argued that she stands on top of a pyramid-type structure. Now if we go inside the capital and look up at the dome, we see this. Now this dome looks almost exactly the same as the one in the Vatican, and at the top is a painting called the Apotheosis. It was painted by an artist called Constantino Brumidi. His story is interesting because in his younger years, he became famous for his paintings commissioned by the Vatican. In 1848, there was a Masonic attempt to overthrow the power of the Pope, and although it was ultimately unsuccessful, this guy who made a living painting for the Vatican, Brumidi, was surprisingly found to be one of the guilty chief conspirators. After that, he was shipped off to the USA, and there he made a name for himself by working for occult societies. 
It was he who painted this painting, which creates a kind of Masonic mirror image to the Vatican. The whole setup of the Capitol, Dome, and Obelisk is present in the Masonic Washington and in the Catholic Vatican. Now this would seem odd for two seemingly opposed ideologies to do this, but then we remember Alice A. Bailey's pronouncement. There is no question, therefore, that the work to be done in familiarising the general public with the nature of the mysteries is of paramount importance at this time. These mysteries will be restored to outer expression through the medium of the Church and the Masonic Fraternity. Bailey predicted that the mystery religion would start to become familiar to the general public through both the Church, meaning the false Church, and the Masonic Fraternity. This two-pronged attack appear to be on opposing sides but are working towards the same end. Remember that the founder of the Illuminated Masons, Adam Weishaupt, had actually come from the Catholic Jesuit order, but after creating the Masonic Illuminati, he claimed to be anti-Catholic. The Masons and Church appear to be opposed, but in fact are both puppets of Satan. Now the definition of apotheosis is the exaltation of a subject to a divine level. So who are they exalting to a divine level here? Well, if we look closer, we see that it's the same man who stands under the dome, George Washington. Look at the bottom and you will see the goddess Columbia, or Asherah, and then George Washington is depicted directly above her. It represents the deification of the man, George Washington. Note the pose he is striking with his left arm raised and his right hand extended outwards. He was depicted in a similar manner when this statue was commissioned. Now this statue is again elevating Washington to a position of God as it was modelled on Zeus. It was meant to go on display at the Capitol but after it was found to make people uncomfortable it was moved to the Smithsonian Museum instead. What is extraordinary is that this pose is more commonly associated with Baphomet, the horned goat god that represents Satan. Remember when we turned the pentagram representing man upside down we got Baphomet. So if the painting intends to elevate the man Washington to the level of a god, we are forced to ask the question, what kind of god? Incidentally, while Baphomet is on the screen, you may also notice that it has both male and female features, which is the usual male and female, light and dark from one source theme that we've already seen countless times. If we go back to the painting one more time, we see that the other figures that surround Washington are also ancient gods and goddesses from pagan mythologies. The likes of Atlantis, Venus, Vulcan, Ceres and Minerva. All in reality just demons looking for worship. Directly beneath the dome is the Capitol's crypt and on the centre of the floor there is a bronze sun symbol. This symbol is geographically the literal centre of Washington DC and all street addresses are attributed in relation to it. You will actually find many pagan gods littered all around the Capitol building. This is just one final example representing Mars to be found near the entrance.